Today we're going to talk you through the conditions that cause pain on the top of your ankle and the top of your foot, not only for day to day activities, but for runners and for those that participate in sport and activities. So beginning at the top of the foot towards the ankle, if there is an ankle sprain, so a traumatic event where the foot turns outward or if the foot is in a plantar flex, so pointing down position and rotation outwards with high speed and force, there's a risk of a high ankle sprain. As you can see from the diagram, we've got two of our shin bones that come down and form our lateral and medial malleolus, and in the middle is our talus bone. If there's a sudden outward motion of this, it can stretch the AITFL ligament that helps hold these bones together. And then higher up the bone, you can see there's a fibrous piece of tissue called our syndesmosis. In a high grade ankle sprain, it can tear the AITFL and the syndesmosis. Often we see these in ankle dislocations. Usually there's a mechanism of injury, so that rotational force through the ankle, there's a high level of pain, often an audible click or pop, the patient is unable to weight bear and there's an immediate swelling. So if this happens to you, you generally know about it because you feel it and it's a case that we often refer directly to A&E for some imaging to see the extent of the injury. Other causes at the top of the ankle is the anterior ankle impingement. So we see this quite often in runners. So as you can see, you've got two bones coming downwards and the talus that sits in between. If you get excessive motion side to side, it can rub and irritate the cartilage on each of the bones and that can cause a form of an impingement. In other cases, that motion can also irritate the soft tissue structures around there, so the ligaments and the tendons that pass over the top of the foot and you can get a soft tissue impingement rather than a bony impingement. Typically in clinic we'll bring the foot upwards and rotate it side to side to try and identify an anterior ankle impingement or you might find if you try to bring your knees over your toes you get a pinching sensation at the front of the ankle. This can often easily be resolved if you just put a simple heel lift into your shoe that helps open up the front of the ankle and take the pressure off that impingement side. In severe cases where there's high levels of impact so we're looking at a car crash or I've had patients before where they've slipped when they're climbing and they hit their foot off a boulder. That can cause an injury called a talus fracture. That's quite a serious injury as the talus is one of the fundamental weight-bearing bones of the ankle joint. So if you have a traumatic incident such as a fall, we'd always recommend that you get to a need to get some imaging. One of the other causes of pain within deep within the ankle joint is osteochondral lesion to the talus. So this is a slight tear or lesion within the cartilage of the talus bone. The symptoms are very similar to that of an anterior ankle impingement one of the main differences in symptoms is that with uh, anterior ankle impingement it often feels quite near the surface, so quite superficial, while patients often describe a tailless osteochondral lesion as a deeper pain that's deep within the ankle joint that they can't touch. In the initial instance, they would need strengthening and stabilizing exercise of the ankle, but they also benefit from an ankle heel lift. A tendon pain that can occur over the top of the ankle and the top of the foot is an anterior tibialis tendinopathy. So as you can see from the diagram, the anterior tibialis runs down the front of the shin bone across the top of the foot and attaches into the inner aspect of the foot. If you get an overload of this muscle typically through running and one of the main reasons we see this is that people pick up hill running so in doing so they have to lift their foot higher stimulating the anterior tibialis to a greater extent as its main function is to lift the foot upwards and then slowly lower back down again. So the introduction to speed work or hill work can overload this muscle and we'd expect a typical tendinopathic response so that's a little bit sore at the start of a run, eases as it warms up and then off often worse after and worse again the next morning when they wake up. This condition typically benefits from strengthening exercises and activity modification. Then moving down the foot towards the midfoot, we have some key conditions that are really important to identify. So first of all, one of the major ones is a Lisfranc injury and that is usually the result of a foot being stuck in plant affection, so slightly pointed down and then rotated outwards. So we often see them in horse riding or in windsurfing where there's a strap over the top of the foot holding it in position and then a person falls to the side. It can cause a dislocation of the second metatarsal bone. So this is a really important condition to identify because the second metatarsal essentially works as a keystone to the midfoot. If there's disruption to it, it can affect the entire integrity of the midfoot. And typically with these patients, we have this specific mechanism of injury. They get an unusual type of bruising. So underneath the foot, they have a, a line or a key of bruising in the midfoot. And these patients need to be referred immediately for some imaging, which is typically an AP, a PA, and an oblique form of x-ray. Milder cases of this are often put into a boot, while severe cases 
does require surgery. Staying with the second metatarsal, another injury to the top of the midfoot is a second metatarsal fracture. So these can often occur in runners. And as you can see from the diagram, how far the second metatarsal reaches back into the midfoot. As it's the longest of all the metatarsals, it gets increased stress placed through the mid shaft of the bone. So it's quite common to get a fracture in the middle of the bone or in the proximal aspect, which is in around the midfoot. You'll get pain typically on palpation on the top of the foot and also sensitivity on the bottom of the foot when you're walking or running. So this won't follow a tendon pattern. It's very much when you weight bear or do some hopping, running or jumping, pain increases rather than improving like a tendinopathic pattern might display. Another cause of pain on the top of the foot is a common perineal nerve entrapment. So as you can see from the diagram, the perineal nerve reaches down over the top of the foot. It helps to provide touch sensation, awareness of the foot and space. And if it gets irritated through soft tissue impingement or through irritation, then it can cause pain, pins and needles and numbness across the top of the foot. And it's often misdiagnosed as a tibialis anterior tendinopathy. So to differentiate between the two conditions, we think about what is our tendon tendinopathic pattern of warming up and pain easing versus a nerve pattern where the pain is typically constant, can get worse with activity, but it's also present at rest and we might also feel it at night. And the other symptoms include pins and needles and numbness, which we wouldn't get with a tendinopathic pattern. Then finally, some of the less common conditions that can cause pain on the top of the foot is a fracture to any of the three cuneiforms. This can occur from a severe sprain or from an object falling on top of the cuneiforms. It's extremely rare, but something to be aware of. So that covers all of the conditions that are likely to cause pain on the top of the foot and the top of the ankle. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel.